We're going to look at some more rules with triangle proportionality. So we're still looking at similar triangles, but we're going to apply it a little bit further. So for this first one, I want to look at similarity with perimeter. So anytime that you have two similar triangles, you can use uh, similarity to find the perimeter of one of the triangles. So instead of having to find multiple things and then add the sides together, we can just jump straight to finding the perimeter. How you do that is you set up ratios where you have side over side equals perimeter over perimeter. So for this one, just make sure that if the small triangle is on top, the small triangle has to stay on top. So if we look at our triangles, we have side, so the bottom of that little triangle will make him yellow. So the bottom of this yellow triangle is 7 over the bottom of the big orange triangle is 17.5 equals the perimeter. So perimeter means we add them together. So 5 plus 11 plus 7. So 5 plus 11 would be 16. 16 plus 7 would be 23 over, we don't know what the, tri the perimeter of this big triangle is, so we're going to put that as x. From here, just like we have been doing, we're going to cross multiply. So I'm going to multiply this diagonal first. So we have 7 times x is 7x. And then we're going to go the other way. We have 23 times 17.5, which is 402.5 and then solve so I'm going to divide by 7 divide by 7 and that leaves us with x equals 57.5 now when we do area we have to remember one big difference look at how your area is labeled our area down here is labeled inches squared which means we are still going to do side over side to get that scale factor equals area over area. However, the area is squared, which means if we cross multiply now, we're not having the same terms here. So we're going to take this first fraction side over side, and we're going to have to square that. So we're going to find the area of the second triangle by using triangle similarity. So side over side, three over two. But remember, to get it into the inches squared format, we're gonna have to square that. Equals, now three is this first triangle right here that's orange, which means that has to be the perimeter that goes on top. So 27 over, we don't know the other one, so x. Remember when you square a fraction, you're going to square top and bottom. So 3 squared is 9, 2 squared is 4, equals 27 over x. At this point, you can go ahead and cross multiply. So I'm going to go this way first. So 9 times x would be 9x. Now I'm going to go the other way. So we have 4 times 27, which is 108. I'm going to divide each side by 9 to get x equals 12, which means the perimeter of the second one is 12 inches squared. So anytime you're dealing with area, don't forget to square your scale factor. Now we have another couple rules. We have the triangle proportionality theorem. Okay, so take a second, draw this down. So what does the triangle proportionality theorem say? The triangle proportionality theorem says if we have this lovely triangle that has this line in the middle, okay, if, oops, where's my pen? If BE is parallel to that bottom line, which is DC, then it cuts it into proportions. So then I can set up the ratios. I'm gonna to try to color coordinate them here. Then we have AE 
over ED equals AB over BC. Okay, and you literally, if these guys are parallel, it splits it into, here's one fraction up here, and it splits it into, here's your other fraction down here. Let's try one. All right, in triangle PQRST is parallel to RQ, so we have that marked right here. If PT is 7.5, TQ is 3, and SR is 2.5, well, the first thing we do in geometry is what? Draw the picture and label, label, label. So PT is 7.5. TQ is 3, and SR is 2.5. We need to find PS, so I'm going to call that X. Okay, so this line in the, in the, inside the triangle is parallel to the base, which means it cuts each side into equal proportions. So it cuts this side into a proportion, so it's X over 2.5, and it cuts this side into a proportion, so 7.5 over 3. From there, we've got our fraction set up. We can go ahead and cross multiply. So we have x times 3 is 3x. And then we have 2.5 times 7.5, which is 18.75. To get x alone, we're going to divide each side by 3 to get x equals 6.25. And that would be our missing side length. The next thing we're going to look at is triangle mid-segment theorem. So if we have this lovely picture and we know that we have a mid-segment, the endpoints of segment, the segment cutting through the triangle, are the midpoints of the sides of the triangle. What's that mean? That means that if JH is a mid-segment, this guy right here, if JH is a mid-segment, it's going to cut each side in half, which means these two sides are equal and these two sides are equal. So FJ equals JK and IH equals HK. Let's look at an example of that one. So here's our lovely picture. Now, this is the same thing. Break it down. So if FE and DE are mid-segments, find DE and AB. One step at a time here. So I'm going to get my other colored pen out here. I'm looking at DE. If DE is a mid-segment, that means he must be parallel to one of the sides. So who's he parallel to? He would be parallel to this guy right here. Well, DE is the mid-segment. Okay, mid-segment. This goes back a little bit. Mid-segment means it's half of the base. So DE would be half of 15. Half of 15 is 7.5. Okay, then if we're finding AD... So now we're finding this guy, wait, we're finding AB, this whole thing. Well, who's he parallel to? He's parallel to FE. Now FE is the mid-segment, which means now we're multiplying by 2 to get 18.4 as the side. Here's the other way this can be used. Let's say you, you're given a triangle with a mid-segment. You're told this is a mid-segment, and you're given, let's say, this is x, this is 15, this is 21. Okay, well, if this guy right here is a mid-segment, that means it cuts the sides in half, which means x equals 15, because it would be the same as its other half. So you can see both of those with mid-segments. Now, what if we have parallel lines? When we have parallel lines, proportional parts of parallel lines, 
okay? So now we don't really have a triangle, but we do have three parallel lines. So if AE is parallel to BF and BF is parallel to CG, whoops, then we can say that this middle parallel line right here is going to make two equal proportions. So it's gonna cut this side into one proportion, which means we have AB over BC, and then it's gonna cut this side into the other proportion. So it would equal EF over FG. Let's look at one, see if we can make it make more sense. All right, frontage is a measurement of a property's boundary that longs, runs along the side of a particular feature, such as a street, lake, ocean, or river. Find the ocean frontage for lot A to the nearest tenth of a yard. Okay, well, if we look at this picture, see our little triangles. We have parallel, parallel, parallel. So we're gonna set this up exactly how we just talked about. Since these three lines are parallel, that middle line cuts this side into one proportion. We don't know this part. So there's our one proportion. We have X over 60. And that parallel line is also going to cut our other side into a proportion, which would be 58 over 42. So there's our fractions. Now we can go ahead and cross multiply in order to solve. So I'm going to cross multiply. X times 42 is 42X. I'm going to get my calculator out to do this next one. So we would have 60 times 58, which is 3,480. To solve, I'm going to divide by 42. To get X equals 82.9 yards. And there would be the length of that missing segment. All right, one more theorem. Congruent parts of parallel lines. Congruent parts of parallel lines, okay? So, if, let's call this A, B, C, D, E, F. If A, B cuts E, D in half, then it cuts F, C in half. So when you have three parallel lines, if the middle one cuts one side into two equal parts, then it cuts the other side into two equal parts, okay? The guys across from each other are not equal. It's the guys on the same side that are equal. So what's that gonna look like? That looks like this. So we have three parallel lines, okay? If we know that it cuts one of them in, in, in half, we can set those two guys equal. So we'd have six X minus five equals four X plus three. Solve it down, get our X's on one side, numbers on the other, so X equals four. Well, if it cuts those two in half, then it has to cut the other one in half, which means these two guys are equal. So we can also say 3y plus 8 equals 5y minus 7. We can solve that down to get 2y equals 15. So y equals 